Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about the big stuff in life, like relationship issues, money issues, our self identity, and all the other big topics that we actually care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my wish for this podcast is for it to bring you some comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. I am recording this podcast today after an entire long weekend of self-love and doing things that I enjoy. And I have to be honest with you, I felt a little bit guilty for doing all of this. Self-care is something that doesn't come naturally to me, unfortunately. But it is also something that over the years, I have started to change my mindset and to guide myself to start doing it because I find that the more care and love that I'm able to give myself, the better I am at loving the people around me as well. Now then, because I was feeling a little bit guilty for putting my own needs first instead of like putting my career first or putting you know time with my family first and all that stuff, I thought, why not talk about this guilt that I have? I'm pretty sure that a lot of my friends, especially in this age, maybe of the Asian descent as well, that you might find this relatable as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first go through the reasons why for the longest time I felt like I couldn't give myself the permission to just be myself and put my needs first. And I'll also share with you how I was able to switch my mindset and eventually start putting myself first again. Now, the first reason why I felt like I couldn't give myself the permission to just be myself and put my own needs first, it's because I guess it comes with age. Like the older we get, you just have more responsibilities and people to worry about. Like we are no longer kids with, you know, guardians who can take care of us when we get into trouble. Like we are representing ourselves now. And As you get into the 30s, it's not just about yourself anymore. It's even about the people that you have to take care of. Like the roles have switched to the point where you have to take care of your parents or your siblings or your partners. And if you have kids, you have to take care of your kids as well. I cannot imagine the responsibility a parent would feel because I'm not there yet. I'm really not ready to be a mom right now. But I can only imagine like the older you get, just there's just more people that you care about. And also, family and personal life aside, as you grow in your career, chances are you are going to have people who are reporting to you and you are representing an organization as well, whether it's your own or a company that you are working for. So whatever that you are doing, and now that we live in the age of social media, whatever you post online as well, they all come with its own set of consequences. I don't know if you guys remember this, but remember there was this lady who works as a PR for a company. She's this white woman that before she took off for her flight to Africa, she was saying that I hope I don't get AIDS. Like It was meant to be a joke, but because of this one very offensive tweet that she tweeted for fun, she got fired from her job. Like, that is just an example that I can think of that, you know, the consequences of our actions can really affect the source of income that we have that can sustain our entire lives. For me, I also find that because I have my co-workers following me on social media, or also I have some old friends from high school or primary school who are following me as well, I always felt like there is this fear of judgment by them as well in terms of what I do. Like if I choose to enjoy myself a little bit more on the weekends, would my subordinate actually think that I'm not working hard enough? Would I be setting a bad example of how they should be working and stuff like that? Like I'm always afraid of the judgment or the whatever people are going to say. Like that is something that's always behind my head, even though I always tell myself that, I have my own life and work is work personal, it's personal, but sometimes we just are self-conscious about all these thoughts that we have, right? And for me personally, I also find that I'm always concerned about the expectations, whether it's from other people or maybe it's just from myself. So a little bit background for you guys. Growing up, I was that kid that every parent's dream to have. So academically, I did really, really well. Like not just the top of my class kind of well, but I was top of the state in my primary school exam. 
And even for my high school result, I actually got myself a scholarship, like a full scholarship that even covers for my living expenses for my entire university life. And even when I was in university, I received awards and scholarship from my university as well. Like I used to be that top performing kid that everyone was very proud of. And I'm not saying it in a boastful way because I actually think that this was a curse for me as well. Because I was able to make everyone so proud growing up and everyone is always amazed by the results that I got that honestly, I don't know how I got it as well. I felt like there is this expectations on how I'm going to do as an adult as well. Somehow people just think that because you have very good grades when you were in school, you are going to be really successful in your career. You are going to make so much money and be really great in your job. But that's not the truth. Whatever grades that we had in school honestly doesn't reflect in our career at all. And even though I'm saying that as a fact right now, I know that because of this background, it actually makes me a little bit harder to take risks to do things differently and to do whatever I want to do. And generally, I think maybe it's my personality. I just care a lot about everyone, which is why I'm always feeling guilty about something. I feel guilty when I'm not at a certain milestone in my career yet. I feel guilty that I'm not making enough money yet. I feel guilty for not keeping myself in shape. When I'm not accepting a friend's invitation to hang out, I feel bad as well. I feel guilty for not waking up earlier to be more productive. You know, I feel guilty if I'm not keeping the house clean enough or I'm not seeing my parents often enough. Like there is always something that I feel guilty about. And I feel like I'm just so tired of mm. feeling guilty about everything. And so it got me thinking like, why? Why do I always feel this guilt? It's, it's not nice to have. And I really wish that none of you have that feeling like the way I do. And... I think this has a lot to do with the way we define success in life. Most of us, we grow up being shown that success equals to people like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs or other big entrepreneurs. Or maybe there are people like celebrities who have achieved a certain level of fame as well. And success are always being shown in the form of luxury, like the amount of money that people make, the big cars that they drive private jets, big houses with giant swimming pools and backyards and stuff like that. The way that we perceive success is through monetary material stuff. But we all know by now that money isn't happiness and money isn't everything. And we need to train ourselves to redefine success into a more wholesome way where it doesn't just cover money or our career milestone, which I really think is very important as well, but it is just not everything. We have to take into consideration the values that we place in life alone. For example, for me personally, I put a lot of value on my family as well as mental health. So these two are the most top most value that I have. So success shouldn't just be defined by the money that I can make, but also by the amount of quality time that I get to spend with my parents, whether I'm texting my sister a lot and chatting with her, whether I'm seeing my nieces when she's in town or not. That should be how I define success. And in terms of mental health, because personally, I've gone through depression before and I just felt like it's my calling in life to help others who are going through other mental health issues themselves. So my success would also be defined by the amount of time I actually dedicate myself to this cause, whether it's by talking to friends or just talking about it in my podcast or in my other social media platforms. This should be how I'm defining success myself. And for you, maybe if you value creativity and self-expression a lot, your success might be measured by the amount of good art that you are able to create or the time spent on creating good arts. And if your life partner is the most important person for you in your life, then maybe you should measure success by the amount of quality time that you can spend with your partner or even like the number of times that you laugh when you spend your time with your partner. It really depends on where we put our value 
values are. And that is how we are able to redefine success to change how we perceive our life. So then the next question is when and how can we start changing this lifestyle and this mindset that we have? And my answer to that is really, if not now, when? I started questioning myself, like, why am I living my life in other people's terms? As much as I love my family, as much as I love my partner, I can't just be living for them as well. At the end of the day, yes, we live as a whole, as a community, as a family member, as a partner, as a staff, as an employee, as an employer. We have many roles in life, but we also have the role of just being us, just being me as a person. And I think that is an enough reason for us to put our need first. Now, I also understand that I am very blessed in a way that if I want to put my own need first, if I want to just practice self-care on my own, my loved ones would understand. My partner is very supportive and understanding. My friends are... They understand that I have my boundaries and I have days where I needed a break as well. My family has always been supportive with me in all the things that I do. I am very blessed in that sense. I know that. And I also know that there are people out there who don't have that privilege of having people who understand them. And maybe what you want, it's really very different from what you've always had as well then I, I cannot speak for you and I cannot speak for everyone. But the question that I would ask myself is then, if I were to die tomorrow, would I rather have lived life in my own terms rather than living lives in other people's terms? So for me, the answer is very clear. It's always about my own terms. I'm sorry if it sounds selfish, but this is my life and I choose to live it that way. And I think this is a decision that we all have to make at one point of our lives because it is when we make decisions and we take responsibility over our decisions as well that we are able to truly move on from where we've always been and to really just own the life that we have, right? So what I want to do is really to encourage you right now to do something that reminds yourself that you are putting yourself first again. And, you know, self-care doesn't have to be big gestures. You can start small first. Here are some examples of things that you can do. Self-care can just look like sleeping in and not care so much about everything else. It can be putting on a sheet mask before you go to bed. It could be buying the new Rare Beauty liquid blush that you've been seeing all over TikTok. It could be treating yourself to a bubble tea after work or going to the grocery store to buy fresh produce again to feed yourself good whole foods again. The definition of self-care and self-love is really different for everybody and I just want to encourage yourself to put yourself first again. It really isn't that hard and we really shouldn't feel so guilty about it because like I said, this life, it's mine and it's yours. And this is me giving you the permission to put yourself first again because I know how it feels like to not feel that you deserve to give yourself that care. But trust me, when you are able to love yourself that well, people who love you would be happy for you as well and they would be inspired to love themselves better as well. So that's all that I have for you today. This is my encouragement for you to practice self-care a little bit more. This is my permission slip for you to put yourself first again. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye!